I'm a housewife and mum of three kids. Uh, I want to teach my children some fundamental and important books. What are the most important and fundamental books that I can teach my children in Islam? So number one, without a doubt, it has to be the Quran. The first thing, thing that the child should be taught is the Quran. He should memorize the Quran uh, before he reaches the age of 10. Um, once the child finishes the Quran, uh, then he goes for the speech of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he memorizes the 40 hadith of Imam Nawi. Once he's done that, he goes for Tuhfatul Atfal, which is basically, he's learned the Quran in a practical way. His pronunciation, his articulation is correct. Now he's going to go to the theoretical side, where mm. he's going to learn the Quran in a theoretical way, where this is how it's read, and this is why you said this, and it's explained to him. And then after that, he goes for the Aqidah series written by Muhammad Abdul Wahab, Talathatul Usul, Kashf al Shubuhat, Kitab al Tawheed. All of this the, student, the kid memorizes, sponge, he takes it all in. Um, once the child does that, then the parent sets a, either a provides a teacher for that child who knows the Arabic and is willing to give money. Historically, even if you look at it, the early scholars, like Imam Shafi'i, I mentioned this before, Shafi'i's mother was very, she didn't know anything about the religion. Mm. She had no knowledge of the deen. Okay? And the scholars, they mentioned that she learned the religion through her son. Wow. But look at that. She, she, all she did was she paved the path for her son. She facilitated for her. The mother doesn't have to be a scholar or a, a person of great knowledge. If she just sets a guideline for her son. Okay. I mean, you don't know the Arabic language, then somebody else can teach him. Right, right. You know, maybe my son cannot learn in the UK. Let's travel and go somewhere else. The religion yeah, is, is, is a very valuable thing. I realized one statement one sheikh said uh, really stuck with me. He said it's become sad that the, the person who fails in the dunya, we say, go seek knowledge of mm -hmm. the religion. And it becomes like an, a second alternative. And so it happens that the people who go for the religion have become the dim-witted ones, the ones who failed in life. And the ones who go for the academic sciences are the smart ones, the clever ones. They're always told, you're smart, go for, for medicine. You're smart, go for this. No, if you are you failed in life okay maybe seeking islamic knowledge is not for you really that's exactly how the sheikh put it and it really touched me it's true so you're maybe saying if the mother sees a spark in her child that maybe he's picking up concepts quickly she should push him towards an islamic education number one that doesn't mean later the child just doesn't learn the academic science of course. of course he does learn study after that but any and every child the path that needs to be paid for that child is the deen he learns the deen the parents should give utmost responsibility on it Great responsibility. Your child, before he reaches the age of 20, teach him the deen of Allah as well. Let him learn this properly. Then you say to your child, look, you know, 15, 14, he's finished the Quran, he's finished all these books. Dad, what do you want to do? Do you want to embark on this path and become a scholar? Or do you want to become a doctor? Mm -hmm. No, Dad, I want to be a doctor. Okay, Jamil, I'll help you with that now. Beautiful. That's how it should be.